Following the launch of the Pixel 6 series, many have begun looking to Google's next mid-range phone, the presumed Pixel 6a. And yes, we've uncovered the first few specs for this device, including its chipset and how the cameras might be a slight downgrade from the Pixel 6. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. Let's recap first though before we really dive into this as we're in a confusing situation where the Pixel 6a kind of needs a little bit more background information. Google has only offered a mid-range Pixel phone for about three years now. With the Pixel 3a in 2019, Google made their flagship camera, and more importantly the software, available in an affordable package. The Pixel 4a carried on that camera whilst also making the next generation Google Assistant more accessible. The Pixel 4a 5G stands out as a little bit of an oddball, releasing as a lesser counterpart to the Pixel 5. And most recently, the Pixel 5a was the first to offer higher quality materials instead of plastic, along with water resistance. But there was a fairly distinct difference though between the A series and the flagship Pixel lineage, despite some impressive hardware throughout the time it has been available. So thanks to recently leaked renders, we've already had our first taste of what the Pixel 6a has in store, well, at least visually. So Google's mid-range phone for 2022 is going to share a substantial amount of DNA with the Pixel 6 series. And from those leaked factory designs, which have been turned into high resolution 3D renders, we know that the Pixel 6a is set to carry on that rear camera bar or visor design that was seen recently on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. It also seems that the display punch hole is moving to the center here too, and the Pixel 6a is going to be, or it looks very much like it's going to be disappointingly, the first A series Pixel to not offer a 3.5mm headphone port. Now this is all a little odd as the Pixel 6a, at least based upon these renders, will look a lot like the standard Pixel 6. There's of course that flat display, which we'd wager will be at Full HD+, and the familiar squared off shape. It is hard to deny that this is going to be a strong look for a mid-ranger. Take a closer look and along with the removal of the 3.5mm headphone port, you'll also see that there doesn't appear to be room for a rear fingerprint sensor. Could we see an in-display fingerprint scanner for the first time on an A-series pixel? Well, it definitely looks like that is going to be the way forward. Perhaps the most exciting detail, though, is with regards to the size of the Pixel 6a. Apparently, this device was measuring at 152.2mm by 71.8mm and will be 8.7mm thick, with a slightly thicker camera bump expectedly. That points to a display in or around the 6.2 inch mark, or slightly smaller, and it's notably smaller on every dimension compared to the Pixel 6, itself a large device. It's also smaller than the Pixel 5a, and given that size is one complaint by many about the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, this is obviously going to be great news. Considering the rear camera bar design is essentially the same as we've seen on the uh, current Pixel 6, one might assume that the upcoming Pixel 6a would also offer the same 50 megapixel Samsung GN1 sensor as its main camera. After all, this would follow the tradition of the Pixel A series thus far, right? Well, according to information uncovered by our APK Insight team here at 95 Google, that is Carl Bradshaw and Dylan Russell, within the Google Camera app, the Pixel 6a, internally codenamed Blue Jay, will have a 12.2 megapixel Sony IMX363 primary sensor. And if that rings a bell, that's because this is the same camera sensor as found in every Google phone from the Pixel 3 through to the Pixel 5a. Beyond the simple decrease to the megapixel count, the GN1 on the Pixel 6 is physically larger than the IMX363, allowing it to capture more light and therefore more detail. While much of Google's photography prowess does come from compensating with machine learning, things like Super Zoom, the larger sensor on the Pixel 6 has been a significant contributor to the phone's camera improvements, and this is likely the biggest cost-cutting measure in this device, at least as far as we've found so far. But moving on, the rear camera bar will also contain a 12 megapixel IMX386 sensor. Judging from how the Pixel 6 uses the same sensor, it will likely serve as the ultra wide on the Pixel 6a. Similarly, the Pixel 6a's selfies will be handled by the same 8 megapixel IMX355 as found on the smaller Pixel 6. So to recap, the mid range Pixel 6a looks like it will be equipped with three cameras the 12.2 megapixel IMX363 primary sensor. 12 megapixel IMX386 ultra wide and 8 megapixel IMX355 front facing selfie camera. And yet again, if the Pixel 6a's camera specs sound vaguely familiar, that's because it's almost identical to what Google had listed for their foldable phone. 
The only difference is that the foldable was listed with having two IMX355 sensors, likely one for the internal and external displays respectively. While only one of the three cameras has changed on the affordable model, this will certainly make a fairly significant downgrade from the Pixel 6 down to the 6a, but given the quality of images from the Pixel 3 through to the Pixel 5, it's no cause for concern here. Despite the aging sensor, we know just how good Google's processing can be, and we're not really that worried ahead of time. We also have some pretty excellent news that we saved until last though. We've been able to discover that yes, the Pixel 6a will use the very same Google Tensor GS101 chip you'll find in the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, the recent flagship devices that is. This is only fitting though, given just how much excitement Google has built upon the Tensor chip during the Pixel 6's launch event. And based upon the chip's inclusion, we strongly believe that the Pixel 6a will offer the same Tensor powered features of its flagship counterpart, features like Google Assistant, voice typing, live HDR, and on-device translations in real time. So tying that all up together with the chipset, that kind of gives us enough information to make some light speculation on a few of the Pixel 6a's key specifications. One would expect at least a 60 Hz Full HD Plus display, which will be in or around 6.2 inches in size, a minimum of 6 GB of RAM and 128 GB of internal storage, based upon previous models that is. There's obviously the dual camera setup that will consist of that 12.2 megapixel IMX363 primary, 12 megapixel IMX386 ultrawide, and 8 megapixel IMX355 front facing selfie camera. Then to sweeten the deal, there's obviously that Tensor chipset. And if priced right, we think this could be a genuine budget killer Android phone. What remains to be seen though, is just how Google intends to market and then price this phone. The Pixel 4a was the perfect palette cleansing small phone and started at $349, while the Pixel 5a doubled down on battery life, added some premium materials and started at $449. It's not yet known what role the Pixel 6a will also be intended to play in the broader Pixel 6 lineup, but it's clear that Google Tensor is the centerpiece of the company's vision and that might add a premium. At this stage, we simply do not know what the pricing will be or what else it might bring to the table. We'd love to get some of your thoughts on the Pixel 6a. Does it seem too good to be true or are you just starting to get excited? Pricing will undoubtedly make or break things here. And if it does even manage to get close to that $400 price point, then wow, you'll consider us sold. Let's hope though we start to hear more as we simply don't know much or anything else, at least at this stage. And be sure to slap your comments down in the comments sections below. Until next time though, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.